Hey there, Smarty fans, especially parents and educators. We've got something special for you, and it's not just another exciting episode of Who Smarted. It's a chance for you to help shape the future of our show. We're on a mission to make Who Smarted even better for both our brilliant young listeners and their amazing parents and educators. That's why we're inviting you to participate in our exclusive first ever Who Smarted survey to let us know what's working and where we can improve. So, parents and educators, grab a cup of your favorite beverage, cozy up, and take a few minutes to fill out our survey. Head over to whosmarted.com and click survey. Together, let's make Who Smarted the best it can be. Thanks for being an awesome part of our smarting community. And remember, the survey is at whosmarted.com. Just click survey. Psst. Hey, smarty pants. I'm about to go on a trip. Listen to the following sounds and see if you can guess what kind of vehicle I'll be traveling in. Is it A, a car, B, a boat, C, a train, or D, an airplane? Attention passengers, please make sure your seatbacks and tray tables are in their full and upright positions for takeoff. Did you say an airplane? That was easy, right? And when it comes to going long distances, airplanes are one of the most popular ways to travel. In fact, worldwide, nearly 10 million people board over 100,000 flights every single day. <gasps> but have you ever wondered how the airplane was invented? Or how something so big and heavy can fly at all? And why do you crave peanuts or potato chips while you're cruising at 30,000 feet? It's time for another whiff of history and science on Who Smarted? Who Smarted? Who Smart? Is it you? Is it me? Is it science or history? Listen up, everyone. We make smarting lots of fun on Who Smarted? Cabin crew, prepare for landing. Thank you. Thank you for flying Smarty Pants Airlines. Ah, uh, travel. It's one of my favorite things to do. I can hop on a plane and be in a completely different country or time zone in a matter of hours. Once I'm at my destination, I get to see all kinds of cool sights, taste exotic cuisines, or just local pizza. Pizza! Nom, 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 nom. And I get to visit friends and family around the world. It's easy to take it for granted, but it's pretty great that you and I get to live in a time where traveling is not only easy, but also fun and affordable. This was not always the case. Huh? Way back in 1900, if you wanted to get anywhere, you had to either walk. So slow. Boring. Ride a horse. He you, smelly. Uh, my butt hurts. Take a boat. This is taking forever. I'm getting seasick. What? Take a train. So loud. Ugh, so dirty. Or hop on a relatively new invention sweeping the planet. The bicycle. Wee, but also slow. However, everything was about to change. And it was actually two brothers working in a bike shop who would take traveling to completely new heights. It's 1900, and Wilbur Wright and his younger brother Orville have just arrived in the coastal town of Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. They left behind their own successful bike shop in Dayton, Ohio, where they first sold and then started making their own bicycles. But why Kitty Hawk? Say, Wilbur, the Oceanside Dunes here at Kitty Hawk are the perfect place for our new experiments. Quite right, little brother. The regular breezes and soft, sandy landing surfaces should be perfect for our studies in how to build a flying machine. That's right. The Wright brothers put bike making aside in order to experiment with machines that flew. They first conducted tests with kites before experimenting with gliders, which are like planes, only without engines. Ah. Then, after three years of trial and error, mostly error, 
Look out! They were finally ready to move on to something much bigger, an airplane. Orville, I think this design with wooden propellers and a gasoline engine might finally take flight. I agree, big brother. We've had nothing but failure the past few weeks, but that extra fabric used to increase the stiffness of the wings might be the key we've been missing. All right then, Orville. You take the controls of the aircraft while I run alongside to balance the fragile machine as you glide down the guiding rail, and then... The sky's the limit. And they were right. On the morning of December 17th, 1903, the Wright Flyer 1 soared into the air. Traveling an incredible distance of 120 feet. But while that's not even half the distance of a football field, it was a start. Our first flight only lasted 12 seconds. Yes, but if we keep at it, big brother, I know we can do better. 20 seconds? Try 20 minutes. Well, the Wright brothers were wrong. On a following flight, they were able to keep their plane airborne for 40 minutes. And once the Wright brothers showed it was possible to build a heavier-than-air machine that could take flight and stay in flight, other inventors around the world began designing their own airplanes. This included Brazilian aviation pioneer Alberto Santos Dumont, whose aircraft flew 197 feet in 1906. Ah. Soon, engineers and inventors were building planes based on these breakthrough designs including a man in Seattle named William Boeing, whose company would go on to build some of the most popular planes ever made. In fact, if you've ever flown on an airplane within the United States, say from New York to Miami or Chicago to Houston, there's a 90% chance it was on a Boeing airplane. Hey, smarty pants, what do you think these early airplanes were made of? While well, today's airplanes are made of titanium, steel, and aluminum, early airplanes were made of wood, wire, and fabric, since designers believed they needed the lightest materials possible to stay in the air. The planes were also small, and the only people who could fit inside were the pilot and co-pilot, and sometimes a few bags of mail. Air mail! But in the 1920s, William Boeing thought the future of travel was in the air. And he began experimenting with a radical new idea. Planes with cabins for passengers. He put two seats on one of his early designs. And it was really scary for the passengers. This, this ride, ride is really bumpy and, and, and cold, and there's n- 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 nothing to eat or, or drink, which might not be a bad thing, because there's no b- 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 bathroom. While today's air travel is relatively fun and comfortable, back then it was neither, and people were not interested in flying. Then, in 1927, something happened to change everything. This is Chet Nickerson reporting live from Paris, where Charles Lindbergh's plane, the Spirit of St. Louis, has just landed, making Lindbergh the first person to successfully fly across the Atlantic Ocean nonstop. Oh, what a day for air travel. What a day for humanity. What a day for croissants. Mmm. Delicious. Lindbergh's flight was the number one news story across the globe, proving that airplane travel was safe and effective. Soon, people everywhere wanted to fly in planes. Two years after Lindbergh crossed the Atlantic, the number of annual airplane passengers went from a few thousand to over 173,000. This led to the birth of commercial airline companies like Delta, American, and United. Thank you for flying Smarty Pants Airlines. Over the years, plane makers began to switch from wood and wire designs to all metal aircraft. While many thought this idea was crazy. I'm not getting in that metal tube. It's way too heavy to fly. Engineers discovered the design of the wings, coupled with the power and speed of the engines, allowed heavier objects to take flight and stay airborne. Here, I'll let this airplane designer explain. 
A plane's engines are designed to move it forward at high speed. We call that thrust. Thrust makes air flow rapidly over specially curved wings, which pushes the air downward, generating an upward force called lift that is strong enough to overcome the plane's weight and keep it in the sky. So to recap, the engines move the plane forward while the wings move it upward. Thrust plus lift equals flight. Uh, can I get some more peanuts, please? Once metal airplanes proved to work, it opened the gates for planes to not only get bigger and faster, but also more comfortable and therefore more popular, ushering in what became known as the golden age of air travel. Welcome aboard the spacious cabin. Attractively decorated, air-conditioned, but draft-free. Delicious food adds to the enjoyment. It's prepared in four simultaneously operating galleys, where dishes can be cooked in five-minute ovens. Look, Wilbur, they have food on aeroplanes now. What will they think of next, Orville? There's been countless jokes about the quality and lack of quantity of airline food. But did you ever stop to wonder why people get so hungry for certain foods like peanuts, chips, and candy when they're flying? Because they're bored. Because they're trapped inside a flying metal tube? Nope. It's got to do with your nose. And we'll tell you all about it right after this break. Hey, Smarties. Trusty Narrator here. I had a unique challenge recently. I needed to learn German for a friend's wedding in just a few weeks. That's when I found Babbel. Thanks to Babbel, I'm well on my way to holding my own in German conversations and just in time for the wedding. Babbel makes learning a new language engaging and practical. It's not just about words. It's about real conversations that you can actually use. And here's a special deal for our listeners. Right now, get 55% off your Babbel subscription, but only for our listeners at babbel.com slash smarted. Get 55% off at babbel.com slash smarted. It's spelled B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash smarted. Rules and restrictions may apply. Join me on this language learning journey with Babbel. Auf Wiedersehen, and let's embrace new conversations together. Hello, smarty listeners. Trusty here, home after a long day of smarting, and boy, am I hungry. The question is, what to cook? Do I make crispy chicken parmesan? Or yummy salsa verde enchiladas? Or mouth-watering chicken sausage spaghetti bolognese? Now, I know what you're thinking. Trusty, how can you possibly cook such amazing, delicious, restaurant-worthy meals after a long day? It's easy. Just say hello to HelloFresh. HelloFresh is America's number one meal kit, and it is literally the best thing ever. Each week, I choose from over 45 scrumptious chef-crafted recipes online. Then, when my box arrives, I have everything I need for easy-to-make, hearty, healthy, delicious meals that I just know you and your family will love. Oh, and if that wasn't enough, HelloFresh wants to give you free breakfast for life. Just go to HelloFresh.com slash SmartedFree and use code SmartedFree for free breakfast for life. One breakfast item per box while subscription is active. That's free breakfast for life at HelloFresh.com slash SmartedFree with code SmartedFree. And now back to Who Smarted? If you've ever been on an airplane, have you ever noticed that you or the people around you seem to crave certain foods? In particular, peanuts, pretzels, chips, and cookies seem to be very popular snacks for those flying the friendly skies. What do you think, right, brothers? I think it's because salty food tastes better when you're high up in the air. I think it's because you get thirstier while flying. Tastes better. Thirstier. Stop, stop. In a way, you're both right. Of course. of course, we're the, we're the right, right brothers. brothers. No, I meant both your answers are right. In a 2010 study, scientists revealed that airline passengers' taste of salty and sweet foods is dulled by around 30% when you're in flight. So, to balance out your weakening taste buds, you crave foods that are high in salt or sugar. Ah! That's why when the snack cart comes rolling down the aisle, many people go for options they might not typically want while on the ground. Salted nuts, chips, pretzels, or sugary cookies, and soda. But why do our tastes for salty and sweet things get dulled while flying? Good question. As planes climb higher into the sky, 
the air pressure and humidity levels inside the cabin drop. Even though today's planes have pressurized cabins, the atmosphere is still significantly drier and the air pressure is much lower than on the ground. So, the combination of dry air and low pressure dry out your mouth and nose, reducing your sense of smell, which plays a key role in how you detect flavor and taste. The dry air also makes you dehydrated or really, really thirsty, which is why you should drink plenty of water when flying. Fascinating. Out of this world. Yes. Oh, and speaking of out of this world, did you guys know that your invention not only led to big passenger planes and even military fighter jets, but also spaceships? What in the world is a spaceship? Well, it's basically a plane that flies out of this world and uh, into space. Back in the 1960s, at the height of people's love for airline travel, engineers around the world were racing to figure out how to take the principles of air travel and convert them into a rocket ship that could launch humans into space and onto the moon, which was accomplished a little over 65 years after your famous first flight. It's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. So in a way, you Wright brothers didn't just fly the first piloted engine-powered airplane. You created a whole new way for us to explore the universe. We're gonna need a lot of peanuts. And cookies. Where is that flight attendant? A big shout out to Gavin from Dexter, Michigan. Thanks for listening to Who's Smarted Every Night at Bedtime, Gavin. This episode, Airplanes, was written by Jason Williams and voiced by Jason Williams. Brandon Bayless, Taya Garland, Jenna Hobit, Kim First Class Davis, Gia Davis, Adam Tex Davis, and Jerry Colbert. Technical direction and sound design by Josh Hahn. Who Smarted is recorded and mixed at the Relic Room Studios. Our associate producer is Max Kamaski. The theme song is by Brian Baggage Handler Suarez, with lyrics written and performed by Adam Tex Davis. Who Smarted was created and produced by Adam Tex Davis and Jerry Colbert. This is an Atomic Entertainment production. Hey there, Smarty fans, especially parents and educators. We've got something special for you. And it's not just another exciting episode of Who Smarted. It's a chance for you to help shape the future of our show. We're on a mission to make Who Smarted even better for both our brilliant young listeners and their amazing parents and educators. That's why we're inviting you to participate in our exclusive first ever Who Smarted survey to let us know what's working and where we can improve. So, parents and educators, grab a cup of your favorite beverage, cozy up, and take a few minutes to fill out our survey. Head over to whosmarted.com and click Survey. Together, let's make Who Smarted the best it can be. Thanks for being an awesome part of our smarting community. And remember, the survey is at whosmarted.com. Just click Survey.